How many data entry clerks and transcriptionists and virtual assistants does the world really need? Are you tired of watching video after video after video, hoping to find something practical about work from home jobs that you can start right now, but instead you hear the same thing again and again and again from everybody. And that would not be a problem, except they take you down the rabbit hole. And what I mean by that is, in most of these videos, they talk about jobs that only pay you three to five dollars, which is not enough no matter where you live. Jobs that are low barrier to entry, but also very, very, very competitive. And what that means is that you practically get zero chances for success. Well, hopefully this is going to be the last video you need to watch on this topic because I'm going to give you everything you need to know. I'm going to try to give you more value than anything that you have watched on this topic on YouTube till now. And that is not just covering these nine work from home jobs that you can do from anywhere right now with very little effort, but I'm going to tell you everything else that you need to know. When should you start looking for a work from home job and who they are for? What exactly do you need to have and what's required in order to get started with the work from home job? For the nine ones that I'm going to talk about, not only am I going to tell you exactly what you need to do and what kind of skills you need to have, but also how much money can you expect to make and where to apply. So literally everything that you would need to know in order to get started with a work from home job, you should get in this video today. So if you want to make sure that you don't lose it, make sure you like it so it gets saved in your saved videos and then you can always come back to it because I'm going to cover a lot of stuff and you might want to be able to come back and revisit what I'm going to cover today. Hey, welcome back to Superhumans, the place to be if you're looking to create a fabulous career and master your life. If you're new around here, hi, my name is Laura, very nice to meet you, I'm the founder of Superhumans. If you like this type of videos and you want to learn more tips and tricks about career, success and happiness, then please be sure to subscribe by hitting the red button down below, it's free, and also hit the notification bell so YouTube lets you know every single Sunday when we post a new video so you don't miss out. While you're there, hit the like button as well. Not only does it help a lot with the YouTube algorithm, but as I said earlier, it helps you save the video in your liked videos playlist so you can always go back and revisit everything I'm going to cover today. On this channel, we talk loads about freelancing and working from home and making money online. So if that's something that you want to learn more about, then you are more than welcome to join our community. My question for you today is, why are you looking for a work from home job? I'm going to talk about the type of people who tend to be looking for work from home jobs in just a minute. So I'm curious, which category do you fall into? With that out of the way, let's get straight into the video. And let's talk about these nine work from home jobs that not so many people are talking about and that you can do right now from anywhere in the world. All right, you guys, so before we go and cover the nine jobs that I was just mentioning, let's cover the basics. And let's start with who are these for? And I think this is an important topic to cover because a lot of the times I get asked by either people who have been laid off uh, or by people who are, uh, let's say, studying and are trying to make some money on the side if this is a good idea for them. And in my opinion, there are three situations or three categories of people that should look for work from home jobs. Number one are people who really want to get out of the nine to five rut and uh, really dislike having to work under somebody that uh, puts them under a lot of pressure or under somebody that limits their freedom. This is a great idea for you to look into work from home jobs, especially freelancing jobs, because that are going to give you a lot more flexibility and a lot more freedom. The second category are people who have been laid off. And the reason why I'm saying this is because I know around the world, a lot of people are in this situation right now. 
And instead of going back and look for another nine to five job, I genuinely think it is easier to find a part-time or freelance type work that you can do from home and literally from anywhere in the world, no matter if you are in Asia or Europe or Americas, you'll be fine and you should find enough jobs that you can do from home. If you are laid off and you're trying to find something to replace your revenue or your monthly income with. The reason why I'm saying this is because low term, uh, sorry, long term jobs are higher commitment and companies nowadays don't feel compelled to go into that high commitment and offer you a long term job because they don't know what's going to happen in the market in the next six months or two years or 10 years. There's a lot of uncertainty right now. So it is a lot easier for them to satisfy whatever needs they have for their business by hiring somebody like you who can work on a dedicated project for a dedicated period of time. So a limited scope, limited time, and then that means lower commitment and uh, both you and them feel like you have more flexibility. And then the third category are people who have a job or people who are studying and want to do this on the side as a way to earn more money. And that's absolutely fine and you should always be able to do that. That shouldn't be a problem as long as if you have a full-time job, your employer is okay with you doing this. But as long as you don't have any competitive threat for them, that should be fine. By the way, if you want to understand more about how freelancing works, I'm going to link down below a video that I made before where I shared everything you need to know about how freelancing works. All right, now let's move into what makes a good freelance job or work from home job. And first of all, it's important to understand that we're not going to talk about businesses. We're talking about jobs. So if you're looking to start um, marketing agency or a coaching business or an Amazon or Shopify store, this is not what I'm going to cover. This is about jobs that you will be doing as a one person gig. Um, so like I like to call it me Inc. Uh, because this is just about you working for a smaller company, a medium sized company, or even an enterprise. It depends a lot on what you do and who your target audience actually is. So we're talking about jobs versus businesses. And what makes a good job, in my opinion, is one that allows you to earn, as I said earlier, more than three to five dollars an hour. So a good, decent wage so that you can support yourself and your family. But that also allows you to have success because in most cases and Trust me, I know the videos on my channel that have the most demand and most views are the ones that talk about data entry and about transcription and translation, which are some of the jobs that have low barrier to entry, but that are so, so difficult to penetrate into as niches because the, the demand is there, but there's so much supply that it makes it hard for you to differentiate and you're gonna end up in price wars. And I've talked about this many times on this channel, so I'm not gonna get into that conversation. So what makes a good work from home job, in my opinion, is one that allows you to differentiate, to find your niche, and to be able to charge higher prices, but also have higher chances of success rather than getting diluted in an ocean of providers. And then last but not least, um, it should be a job that allows you to grow. And you will see that here, I'm not going to talk about jobs that require no skills. It's not me. I'm, I'm not somebody that would be preaching for this type of jobs, especially because they will probably be some of the first ones that are gonna be automated in the future. And I would not put you into doing any of those jobs that will not allow you to have an income in the next five to 10 years. So there are jobs that allow you to grow, that allow you to earn enough, and that allow you to evolve throughout your career path. And maybe ultimately you can even open your own business and hire people to help you and so on if that's something that you want to do. All right, 
So with that being said, let's get into the nine jobs and we're going to talk exactly about what you need in terms of skills and equipment, what would you be doing, how much you'll be earning and everything you need to know practically. All right, so job number one that I want to talk about today is a market research specialist or analyst. And essentially, like every other job that I'm going to talk about today, this requires that you have a computer and a good connection to the internet, but really nothing else. And it doesn't require that you have any degree or anything like that. However, if you have any type of marketing knowledge, that is going to be helpful for sure. And what you would be doing as a market research analyst, you would be working with companies that are looking to understand essentially the market that they are playing in. So for example, companies that want to expand into new countries, so new markets, they would want to use your services to understand uh, what the target audience looks like, how many people they can target, uh, or if they work in a B2B, so business to business kind of environment, they would need to understand how many businesses of a certain type exist in that market. They might need your help to identify their competitors, uh, companies that offer similar services or products and understand what the competition looks like. So the quality and the price and the offering that these competitors have. And essentially what you would need to be doing is understand what they do, understand their business, and then figure out what they need to know about that market, either the competitors or the target audience or anything like that. So you would be researching the internet, it is called desk research, and you would be coming back to them with a report. And sometimes that can be just a simple Excel list, or it would be a more developed type of report that you would be writing in uh, Microsoft Word or in Microsoft PowerPoint or in OneNote or something like that. So in terms of skills, what you would absolutely need is obviously be able to use the internet. So use um, the regular internet uh, browsers that you would typically use like Edge or Chrome or Safari and that kind of stuff you would need to uh, be able to search and to figure out the right keywords and the right uh, search terms to be able to identify the results that you need to, to get to in order to produce the report. And then you would need to be able to use Microsoft Word or Excel or PowerPoint or OneNote or whatever else uh, is requested uh, in terms of the output format that you would be providing back to them. In terms of how much money you can make, as a market researcher, you would be uh, paid up to $20 an hour. And sometimes you would need to also um, make phone calls and run interviews or surveys to get more information uh, that you would be including in that market research analysis. And nowadays, a lot of companies would be looking for this kind of stuff from people who are looking to um, let's say launch a new product um, on Amazon and they want to tap into a new uh, market to uh, people who have been around for years and years, but they are looking to expand into new markets, especially now that everything is being done online, they can very easily do that. So they would need you to learn more about that particular market. In terms of places where you can apply, uh, for this and actually many of the other ones that I'm going to talk about, uh, Upwork is probably the easiest place where you can go ahead and look for this type of jobs. But freelancer.com, guru.com and a bunch of others that are more generic platforms, uh, people per hour, those would be good places for you to go and look for this type of jobs as well. All right, job number two that I want to talk about today is an SEO expert. And actually, I've touched briefly on this category. I was actually talking about a specific niche within uh, the world of SEO in one of my previous videos where I was talking to you about YouTube SEO research. And if you're interested in more details about that specific type of job, I will make sure to link the video down below. But in general, being an SEO expert is another type of job that doesn't necessarily require that you have any degree. 
it helps a lot if you obviously understand how SEO, search engine optimization actually works and how the different platforms leverage SEO and the type of algorithm that they have so that you can be able to advise your customers and suggest the type of keywords that will actually help them ride the algorithm as they say. So for example, if your customer simply wants to use Google, then you need to understand how Google SEO works. Or if they want to use Instagram, then you need to understand how that one works. Or if they want to use YouTube, then you need to understand how Google SEO, sorry, how YouTube SEO works. So there are many types of different jobs that you can do as an SEO expert. You can be somebody who advises companies on the types of keywords that they should be using. You can be somebody who does an SEO audit of a company's web page or their um, other platforms or social media content. All in all, what you would need to know in order to be an SEO expert is, as I said, really understand how the different algorithms operate. But for that, you don't need a university degree. You simply need to go and uh, take some courses. There are some very, very good ones on Udemy and Skillshare, but there are lots of other different places where you can go and study SEO and you can even get certified as an SEO expert quite easily and quickly. Now, in terms of technology that you need, obviously that would mean, again, being able to have a computer and an internet connection and having um, mastery of internet browsers, and that's pretty much it. Um, and in terms of the payment, you can make upwards of $30 an hour as an SEO expert. Of course, it varies a lot depending on the exact type of job and the exact type of niche that you choose for yourself. But that is definitely one of the more lucrative type of jobs that you can do rather than go for the three to five dollars an hour. There are probably uh, companies that offer this type of job like SEO research and SEO work also for three to five dollars an hour. But you have a lot of options that you can choose from and a lot of niches that are a lot more lucrative and you can get a lot better paid for those. All right, you guys, number three is a YouTube manager or a podcast manager. And what you would be doing if you are a YouTube manager or a podcast manager is you would be working with somebody who has a YouTube channel or a podcast and you would help them manage that channel. You would help them schedule upcoming posts or episodes. You would help them sometimes edit them. You would help them upload them on the right schedule, so on time and in the right way. You'd help them sometimes promote them on social media and maintain the calendar of the upcoming episodes. Now, you can do this for a while, and if you do it really well, you can progress and grow into being a producer. So if the channel that you work with or the podcast that you work with evolves into being one with a much larger audience, then you can end up being a producer, which means that you would not only be in charge of managing the episode, the production and um, the upload, but you would also be working with companies who want to get promoted in the video or in the podcast and make sure that their content gets included in the right way. You'd be working with the editors and the um, audio engineers and everything like that in terms of the podcasts or with the um, video editor for the YouTube videos. And then you would make sure that uh, the calendar is done in the right way and that the upcoming episodes are agreed upon with the person who uh, runs the podcast or the YouTube channel. I've seen many jobs like this um, on platforms like Upwork, but uh, that is obviously not the only place where you can find this type of jobs. And in terms of what you need, um, you'd obviously need a computer and a good internet connection. I think I'm probably going to repeat this every single time. Uh, but other than that, you only need to understand how podcast platforms work or how the YouTube algorithm and the YouTube world operates. That would help a lot, but I'm pretty sure that you can very easily find this type of jobs even if you don't have a lot of experience because you can learn a lot on the job and a ton of these things uh, you can just pick up as you go and learn from the person that is currently 
managing or the podcaster or the YouTuber themselves. In terms of how much you can make, you can very easily make upwards of $25 or $30. Most of the job posts that um, are looking for a video manager uh, for YouTube or a podcast manager uh, advertise as intermediate um, experience level role. So that means that you probably would get paid at least $15, $20 an hour, if not more. Number four is an explainer video specialist. And you might have not have heard this before, but I'll explain in a second what it means. So an explainer video is a piece of content that doesn't include people or places, but it's actually created using doodles. And there are lots and lots and lots of tools nowadays that you can use to create this kind of doodly videos instead of actually shooting people. And the production time not only is uh, less intense, but is a lot faster as well. So typically what you would be doing as an explainer video specialist, uh, well, the jobs could be very diverse from obviously doing the end-to-end -end work, uh, but also uh, starting from designing the storyboard to actually producing uh, the doodles uh, themselves. Now, I've seen job posts that are a fixed price for an explainer video production that range between $100, $150, but I've also seen hourly rate type of jobs for this type of specific requests, and you would probably be making upwards of $25. I've even seen freelancers charge $125 per hour for this type of work. So being an explainer video specialist is definitely a very lucrative type of job. Now, what you would be needing for this job is a lot of creativity, first of all, a computer, a good internet connection, and ability to use one of the tools, one of the softwares that allow you to create this kind of explainer video uh, doodles. Now, many of them are actually free. Some of them you might need to pay for, but I know there are options that only charge you once and you can use that solution for as many months and years you would want to without having to pay anything more. So I think they charge you 60 or $70 uh, in advance and then you can use it as much or as little as you need and that could be a good return on investment if you're gonna make a hundred dollars on your first explainer video content so think about that absolutely now in terms of places where you can look for this type of job I'm gonna say Upwork again because I literally just saw a couple of minutes ago lots of jobs that are looking for explainer video specialists and that's as I said because many companies need video type content to use either in their social media or on their own website or in other places where they need to have motion pictures. But instead of actually shooting pic uh, people or places, especially now with the lockdowns and confinement, it's actually a lot easier to use doodly videos. So explainer videos that give the same value without having to go through the same pain of having to shoot somebody uh, in an actual video or, you know, people or places in an actual video. Now, job number five is actually very, very connected to the one we just spoke about. And this one is a voiceover artist. So essentially what you need to be doing here is help create those doodly videos, those voiceover videos that uh, explain different products or different processes or that kind of stuff by using your voice. So you would be given a script and you would need to read the script with the right intonation and the right accent. Now, sometimes some of the jobs ask for a specific type of accent, uh, which if you qualify for or if you can do, is uh, obviously even better. But oftentimes they don't even ask for an accent, they just want somebody who speaks a certain language, typically English. But if English is not your native language, uh, I'm sure you can find jobs that require for other languages, not just for English. Now, in terms of what you need this time around, other than a computer, 
and a good internet connection, I would suggest that you have a very good quality microphone because then you would need to have your voice recorded with very, very good clarity and quality of the sound and the balance and everything like that. So having a good quality microphone is going to allow you to provide high quality services so then you can charge more. Now, in terms of where you can look for jobs, of course, Upwork is another place, uh, again, that you can keep in mind. Freelancer or guru or people per hour have this type of jobs as well, but the most I've seen are on Upwork. In terms of how much you can charge for this type of job, in case you want to be a voiceover artist, um, I've seen people charge between 30 and $60 an hour. So obviously, depending on the length of the content that you would be uh, providing your voice for, you might not actually have a full hour, but it will take you a few, uh, you know, repeats to get it right. So you might actually want to charge either by the hour or a fixed price, assuming the number of repetitions that you would need to go through. Presentation designer. And this one is not your typical graphic designer type of job, which, I mean, is great, but is a highly saturated market. Uh, what I'm talking to you instead about is a presentation designer. So this one would be a PowerPoint presentation designer or a Canva presentation designer or even a keynote presentation designer. And what you would need to be doing as a presentation designer would be to work with companies or individuals that are in need of a PowerPoint, let's say presentation that they need to use for a company pitch deck or an investor pitch deck or an academic uh, pitch deck, for example, and they need you to help them design a template and then they would use that template to create their own presentation. So what you need to know is obviously either Keynote or Canva or Microsoft PowerPoint, but your graphic design skills don't need to be at the level um, of you know, the graphic design skills that an actual graphic designer would have to have if you have them is even better. And you can obviously learn how to do that quite easily. You don't need a degree or a university certification or anything like that. There are lots of courses where you can learn how to uh, create uh, PowerPoint presentation templates or Canva uh, presentation templates or that kind of stuff. There are lots of free resources already on YouTube right now if that's something that you would like to pursue. Now, in terms of how much you can earn as a presentation designer, most of the time you would get paid uh, a fixed fee because you would be delivering a fixed output. So I've seen companies pay anything between 40 and $100 for uh, the template, but I've seen lots of companies looking to pay based on hourly rate as well, and many of them pay around $60 an hour. Of course, if you're not as experienced, you'd probably get paid a little bit less, but certainly this is not one of those jobs where you earn between three and $5 an hour for sure. Job number seven is a writing job. And I need to be specific here because there are some things that you need to have into consideration before you decide going for a writing job and exactly what type of niche or job you want to go for. So obviously as a writer, you have multiple, multiple, multiple options from writing your own book and publishing that on Amazon to writing blogs, articles, and social media content either through agencies or on your own directly on freelancing platforms. Now, I want to talk specifically about writing as a freelancer on freelancing platforms because I think there is lots of demand already and it's easier when you work directly with the customer. Now, obviously working for an agency is also a great idea because they will keep uh, a full pipeline of, uh, you know, requests coming your way and it will make it easier because you don't have to worry about the negotiation with the customer and finding your leads. But at the same time, you would probably not get paid to the same amount because obviously there is an agency fee that they would be retaining for having found the leads and for having given you 
the jobs that you are working on. So let's talk about working as a freelance writer directly on freelancing platforms. Now, there are again, various types of writing work that you can do. You can be a writer or a proofreader or an editor. Let's talk about being a writer specifically. Obviously the other two categories are also very lucrative ones and you can very easily grow into being a proofreader and an editor while you know you will have done writing for a good enough amount of time. As a writer, you can be an article writer, a blog writer, a sales copywriter, a funnel content writer, you can be a social media co copywriter and so forth. But what I want to talk about is being a blog writer because that one I think is the easiest to tackle if you don't have much experience as a writer because you obviously have some passions. And the easiest thing would be to write about those passions. And nowadays, especially on Upwork, there are so, so, so many requests for blog writers because every single company, small or big, wants to have a blog so that they can tap into, well, the realm of SEO and get ranked in search and show up and generate leads that way. So having an a live blog is definitely important. And if you match in terms of your passions with their area of activity, that makes it a match made in heaven and you can, le you can earn a really nice income by doing the writing for their blog. And typically you would be paid per blog article that you will be writing. But I've seen many cases where companies uh, pay based on hourly rate. However, I would suggest that if you choose to be a blog or article writer, you do negotiate fixed prices, maybe based on the number of words that you're going to be writing rather than be charging based on hourly rate, because that can get tricky very quickly. Now, in terms of what you need in order to be a blog writer or an article writer, obviously, you need to have a good command of the language that you need to use, typically English. So you need to be fluent in English, either because that's your mother tongue or because you really have used it for so long and you are really confident in the quality of your English language knowledge. Aside from that, the internet connection and the computer are obviously no negotiables. You need to have those in order to be a uh, good uh, and well-equipped blog writer. You can probably do that on your phone, but I would not necessarily recommend it. Now, in terms of how much money you can make as a blog writer or an article writer, that varies a lot depending on, let's say, the industry that you write for. Because the more specific the industry becomes, so for example, if you write legal text or medical text, you can charge a lot, a lot more. But if you write for like travel agencies or specific blogs that, um, I don't know, talk about watches or talk about certain foods or diets or exercising and sports or that kind of topics, you would then not necessarily be able to charge that much. But the more specialized niches like medical blogs and um, as I said, legal blogs, those are going to be, um, you know, ready to pay you a lot, a lot more. All in all, being a writer is definitely a good one to look into. And as I said, it gives you a great opportunity to grow in the future from being the actual writer to being the proofreader and then becoming the editor for that blog. All right. Job number eight is an online community manager. And what you would be doing as an online community manager is shocker, you would be managing online communities. So let me explain exactly what this means. So let's take somebody that has an online course. Well, typically when somebody launches an online course, they also create a Facebook group that uh, allows them to enroll all the people that are participating in the course so that they can talk amongst each other or they can share experiences and share wins and share challenges and talk amongst themselves and figure out next steps that they need to take or think about online events 
there will always be a Facebook group where all the participants are coming together and sharing experiences and notes and questions and answers and that kind of stuff. And an online community manager is somebody that is always present or obviously as much as possible present in the group and answers questions and manages conversations and is able to point people in the right direction and give instructions and that kind of stuff. So you would be present in a social media channel, typically a Facebook group, and help drive the conversation around the different members of that community. Now, that is a job that doesn't require you to have any degree, it doesn't require you to have any previous knowledge. Typically, it helps if, of course, you speak the language of the group, but that's typically English, and it helps if you are familiar with the topic that is the center of that group. So if it is for an online event, it helps if you are knowledgeable about the event itself, but you would probably be taken through that online event yourself so you are able to answer questions and give guidance and that kind of stuff. And if it's a Facebook group related to an online course, you are probably given a Q&A that you can use to answer uh, most frequently asked questions or you will be trained by the person that uh, owns the Facebook group so you know how to answer most frequently asked questions. All in all, being a community manager is something that doesn't require you much experience and you should be able to do it with quite a lot of ease and it also pays really, really well. I've seen um, companies offer between $15 and $35 an hour for this type of jobs of online community managers and a lot of these jobs are right now on Upwork so you can go ahead and look for them as you're watching the video. All right, and job number nine is an Amazon store manager. And this one, again, is one that doesn't require you to have a degree, it doesn't require you to have exceptional skills, but you do need to understand how Amazon FBA actually works. You need to understand what drop shipping is, you need to understand how fulfillment works, and you need to understand how SEO works for Amazon and how to optimize product listings. Now, all of this you can very easily learn in a few days, probably. If you go through some courses, some of them are really, really well known in the market. Others are probably still coming up even on Udemy or on Skillshare, I'm sure you can find this type of courses if you go and look for not a lot of money to be invested. Now, as I said, what you would be doing as an Amazon store manager is pretty much manage an online shop, an online store that an Amazon FBA seller creates on Amazon. So that means working with fulfillment so you understand uh, how to order products from wherever they're sourced and uh, follow the shipment of the products to the place of dispatch that Amazon is then going to be using. Understand and uh, produce the listings for the product and uh, uploading them to Amazon and optimizing them so they show up in search. You need to know how pay-per-click works and figure out how you can support your products in the store to be visible and get more sales. You need to work with the store owner to maybe look for new products to add to their product portfolio and so on and so forth. So this one is a more complex job, but again, it's not one that requires you to have a university degree or any type of certification. You just need to understand how Amazon FBA works. Typically, they ask you to have prior experience, but I'm sure you can find an entry-level job to begin with so that you can learn the ins and outs of Amazon FBA. Now, what you can earn as an Amazon FBA store manager varies tremendously because if you work with somebody that only has one product in their store, they would pay you less and they would typically pay you uh, based on an hourly rate. If you work with somebody that has a much larger Amazon shop and has multiple products in their portfolio and has lots and lots and lots of sales, then they will be ready to pay you more. I've seen people pay really nice hourly rates 
um, upwards of 30 and 40 dollars an hour but i've also seen companies pay thousand dollars a month for somebody who is ready to manage their online store now of course what you would be needing for this type of job is your typical computer and internet connection i think you are already sick of hearing me say this but i needed to tell you this because I committed at the beginning of the video that I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about these jobs. Now, if you want to learn this, as I said, there are lots of places where you can learn more about Amazon FBA, but even on YouTube, there's a lot of free content that you can go and ingest and learn from so that you know everything that uh, exists out there about Amazon FBA. So then it's easier for you to get one of these jobs. Now, the places where you can go and find this type of jobs, for sure, Upwork is one of them, but you can very easily go to Facebook groups that are dedicated to Amazon FBA sellers and you can offer your services there as well. I'm pretty sure that you can find a lot of people that would be absolutely happy to hire somebody like you so that uh, they can offload some of the work and uh, they that gives them time to focus on the strategy of their brand and the strategy of their store and expanding and growing that and moving into new markets and so on and so forth now with that i think um being an amazon online store manager would be a great one for you to look into especially if you are somebody passionate about FMCG and if you are as I said passionate about uh, selling goods and sourcing them and bringing happiness and value into people's lives all right you guys that was it for today I hope you enjoyed today's video and I hope you liked the nine work from home jobs that I shared with you today I hope you've seen I intentionally didn't mention programmer or graphic designer or web developer or any of the jobs that actually require you to either have a university degree. I didn't talk about teaching online because typically that does require that you at least have a certification. So these ones definitely you can learn and do very quickly. You can learn from home. You can do them from home in a matter or of days, weeks, or maybe months if you really don't have any skill, but you can learn it absolutely. And not only that, but all of these are future proof. They allow you to actually have a job in the coming years as well without any concern when it comes to automation or anything like that. If you like this video, be sure to like it, make sure to subscribe if you haven't done so, and also share with a friend who might also be interested in getting a work from home job. With that being said, I hope you create everyday magic. I hope you have a lovely day and a lovely week, and I'll see you next time. Bye.